In the previous video, we spoke about the importance of executive clemency. And in this video, I wanna get a little bit more specific, and that's actually to show you how the process works. So if you haven't visited our website at prisonprofessors.com, I would encourage you to visit the site because you'll find free information there. In fact, if you go to the top menu bar and you click on the services tab, Watch it drop down menu, just either to click mitigation or prison. And then in the right sidebar, you are going to see a section that says early release. I think I'll build another article there that just says clemency. And you can click it and you will actually find the forms that the Department of Justice traditionally uses to consider grants of clemency. Now, there are different types of clemency. Clemency is the broad term that is codified in the United States Constitution. It gives the President of the United States the sole unfettered discretion on a re, uh, forgiving a prison sentence. That's what a pardon is. And there are guidelines that govern pardons. There is a commutation, which effectively forgives a sentence, meaning it can result in a person not going to prison, as was the case with Roger Stone for the most recent one, or Scooter Libby from President Bush's administration. Then there is um, commutations which happen while somebody is in prison, as President Obama, President Clinton, um, even President Trump have commuted people who are serving very long sentences. Um, sometimes they will also remit the fine as well as the sentence. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to get immediate release, as when in the, in the era of President Obama, there were many people serving life, and then he commu commuted the sentence down to like 20 years, and so the guy had to serve another two years before he got out. I don't really understand the logic of why President Obama did that, um, but the point is, if you want to throw your hat in the ring to be considered, there is a process, and that process really requires an individual to learn how to advocate for himself. A pardon is, is different from a, a commutation because pardons are typically granted to people who are not in prison. They're typically granted to people who have been out of prison for five years or people who are yet, not yet brought into the system. For example, President Trump could issue a pardon to Bill Bannon, for example, who is currently under indictment. And if President uh, Trump pardoned Bill Bannon, which I suspect is probably not beyond the realm of possibility, Bannon's criminal justice problems would come to an immediate end. They, they, they would have nothing more to pursue him for. Um, uh, so, so that's a proactive pardon. I am going to guess that most of the people that are watching the Prison Professor's YouTube channel are much more interested in a commutation, a sentence, an executive clemency grant of commutation. And so that's why I'm going to spend the rest of the time focusing on that specific type of executive clemency. You can click the link on the accompanying article here to get the actual form that is available on the Department of Justice's website. And you will see on that form, you don't really need a lawyer to complete this for you. What you need is an excellent advocate and you should be your own best advocate. But even to advocate for yourself, you need to be successful in crafting a story a story that will help your audience understand who you are, what you've learned from this experience, what you've done to make things right, why you will never be caught up in the justice system again. And that really requires a good writer and a good thinker. Nobody knows your story better than you. Our team does interview people to craft these packages or so that we can help you tell your story. But at the end of the day, it's you that has to be your own best advocate. So I recommend that you download the form from the Department of Justice's website. And again, the link is available in this article. Then start crafting your story. Start talking about how you got here. Do not lie. That would be the worst thing that you could do. Be, and I'll explain that on what happens after it. Um, but you want to really talk from a sense of remorse. And I would recommend that you watch some of the uh, appropriate videos that I've done with federal judges who talk about what they want to see in a statement of remorse. Then um, I would ask you or encourage you, if you've got the time, the energy, the resources, to take the next step 
after you've told your story, reach out to stakeholders, whether it is your sentencing judge, whether it is your prosecutor, whether it is investigators who oversaw your case. And what you may want to do with those people is ask them, tell them why you feel that you're a worthy candidate for mercy, but also ask them if they would support your petition. If they won't support the petition, ask them, well, at least would you not oppose the petition? Because the more information you can gather, the stronger you can advocate for yourself. Because what's going to happen after you submit this document? So you put the package together, then the next step is to submit it to the Department of Justice's pardon attorney, unless you have a really strong platform, like uh, you've got Kim Kardashian on a speed dial, and you could ask her to get on uh, get get online and start uh, lobbying for your efforts on your own. Or you may have other powerful people within your network that could work toward advocating for you. If you don't have that that level, that potent, powerful uh, advocacy group on your behalf, you've got to do it for yourself. And that means you go through the traditional channels, submit it through the uh, White House's um, pardon attorney's office. The pardon attorney then uh, theoretically is going to review your petition and then submit it to the office of the general counsel of the White House and the general counsel then will uh, probably speak with the chief of staff at the White House and eventually this gets to the, uh, the desk of the president because it's only the president that has the ability to make a decision on whether to grant executive clemency. But today is the day to be thinking about it because you, 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 if you don't get your petition in line and prepared, you're, you're not even going to be considered. I would recommend that just because I'm filming this video in the fall, late November 2020, just before Thanksgiving, I know that this president only has about 60 plus days in office, less than 70 days in office. And I would guess that you're going to see scores of people getting relief. So you've got a real sense of urgency to get your package in. If you need help, find yourself a good writer who can help you tell your story, uh, build an advocacy package, and, uh, and, and, and start moving the needle. This doesn't happen by accident, but it's, it's really a grant of mercy. You can do it by yourself, or you can hire uh, a team to help you. Um, visit us at prisonprofessors.com so that you can get really good insight and free information. I will only show you the strategies that, that, that people on our team have used. And uh, we hope that this will be something helpful as a resource to you as you start advocating for yourself. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to us at Prison Professors on YouTube or on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and of course, visit our website at prisonprofessors.com. I am Michael Santos, and I wanna thank you for being a part of our community.